Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to lecture 10 of AFM hedging interest rate risk this is going to be the last lecture under your risk management because the next lecture will be from accusation and merger okay so let's start and the good thing is most of the things that you have studied under my previous lecture that is lecture 9 foreign exchange risk are repeated here so that's why we can quickly move through this in the interest rate risk but there are some differences that you need to take care of and before watching this video if you have not watched my previous lecture that is lecture 9 for uh, foreign exchange risk please go and watch it you have to watch that first before watching this so that this becomes easier for you to grasp okay and um, it's a long video okay the previous lecture was four hours i think it was four or ten minutes something this is going to be a shorter video compared to that because uh, most of the things are covered there so i'm not going to repeat it here okay so here we are going to focus on the derivatives forward rate agreements there also we have done forward and exchange rate here it is known as fra forward rate agreement so the moment you see fra in your exam it is an interest rate risk management it is for the interest rate not exchange rate otherwise they will give forward rate and mind you that i know that you are so much used to exchange rate exchange rate exchange rate the moment you come to interest rate you are still in that mind you know looking for two currency choosing the rates the higher rate lower rate i know it happens so please you need to sometimes unlearn what you have learned in exchange when you come to the interest rate you understanding otherwise chances are that whatever you have studied in exchange rate risk you will apply it in interest rate risk there are chances like that and it has happened so you have to unlearn some things and learn new things here okay i know that shifting of mine is little difficult but through practice of both the questions both the set of questions one exchange rate one interest rate you will be able to cope better and uh, in your past paper both have come okay i cannot say exchange rate will come more or interest rate no both comes but the based on the percentage wise it is the exchange rate risk management which comes more than interest rate okay but during my time it was interest rate risk management which i got okay i got it with exchange rate actually so yeah both can come together in one question as a 50 marks question or uh, usually this question comes as a 25 marks question the risk management question okay whether exchange or whether interest rate so first one is forward rate agreement this is easy but little differences are there we'll go to that later next is interest rate future so when you're writing future remember there are two futures one is for currency one is for interest rate same option option on interest rate option on currency or it is known as option on interest rate future option on future when it comes to interest rate okay then we have caps flows and callers this we did not have for the exchange rate we have it for the interest rate what is cap what is flow and what is caller interest rate swap we had currency swap forex swap same way we have interest rate swap interest rate swap has a very high chance of coming in the exam okay it usually comes in the exam i got interest rate swap and it's nothing difficult it looks difficult trust me especially if you're doing self-study guys mind you for afm if you're doing self-study these things will be a little difficult okay that's why i'm here to assist you with that and then we have swaptions swaptions is from the word you can say it is swap plus options okay it is like option on swap the two words if you combine become swaptions so these are the things we are going to cover in this lecture so starting with fra what is fra same like forward it just fixes one rate of interest whether it's on a loan or deposit remember we are going to deal with two things one is loan one is deposit you might either get a loan in the exam or deposit in the exam or board in the exam okay usually you get one only either one of this it could be a borrowing that means a loan or you are depositing it same like for exchange rate we have payment we have foreign payment or foreign receipt here also we have a loan or a deposit either you have to pay interest either you are receiving interest okay but fra fixes that rate fixes one rate second when you're coming to the interest rate risk this are that some there are some terminologies that you have to understand how you read fra it is not like your exchange rate they are giving two rates no 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 
in interest rate they are giving like this 5 dash 8 FRA or 5 V8 FRA what does it mean this is how you read it FRA for a three month it could be for a loan or a deposit anything okay three let's say loan FRA for a three month loan starting in five years month starting in five months time sorry starting in five months time so starting in five months time you start with five that's why five and then for three months you add three with that five and then it becomes eight you understanding so if this i will change this question now let's say four month loan starting in six so it will be six starting in six months time means first number will be six and add four with it because three month lo four month loan so six plus four ten so it will be six v ten fra this is how you read it so the first number that is there five that is the starting period they will say five, uh, starting in five months time starting in four months time whatever the starting is that is the first number the second number eight you add the duration of the loan with that starting month so five plus three makes eight okay that's how it works in interest rate then there are two interest rates that will be given to you if you're confused sometimes they don't say what rate the lower rate is always the depositing rate investing rate higher rate is the borrowing rate i repeat lower one is for the investing higher is for the borrowing if they do not specify what are the two rates now we are moving on to this table go through this table after this we are going to do a question you have to compare fra with the market rate okay sometimes you might have a higher market rate then fra sometimes you might have a lower market rate than fra let's go by the uh, let's go through the left side first what if your fra rate is higher than the market rate let's say this is a loan okay you have to understand whether it's a loan or a deposit it works opposite so i'm only teaching you for loan you can do the opposite for the deposit okay for the loan if i if your fra rate is higher than the market rate remember you are always paying at the you are you are paying at the market rate correct but at the end you will be paying at the fra rate only because it is fixed at that position this is how it works before i do a question i have to tell you how it works otherwise you will not understand the question let's say fra rate is four percent market rate is two percent loan is ten thousand so you are paying two percent you are paying the market rate two percent on that ten thousand correct because your fra rate is higher than your market rate market rate is two percent fra is four four percent you have to pay additional two percent because it has to come up to four percent fra rate only so you have to pay two percent so you have to make the payment to the seller buyer of the fra have to make the cash payment to the seller it's always like that whenever your fra rate is higher than the market rate you have to make the payment if it's the other way around then you are going to receive the payment you are going to receive the compensation why because in the market rate you have paid already the high amount but fra rate is lower so it has to come to that fra rate the lower amount that's why you are going to receive the compensation you understanding the difference between the market and the forward rate that amount either you have to pay either you are going to receive so now let's do a question to understand this better so the first question in fra okay calculate the interest payable if in two months time the market rate is seven or four percent okay the bank offers a two is to five fra at five and four point seven remember this is how they will present fra for to you in the exam also okay so it is now first of november 2006 and cash deficit in two months time 8 million which lasts for approximately three months treasurer is concerned that interest rates may rise before this month so is concerned use the fra to fix the interest rate okay so now let's start how do you start this question You start with the choosing the rate first choose the rates choose all the correct rates what rate are you going to choose remember there are two rates 4.7 and 5 percent and this is you have to understand whether it's a loan or a deposit this is a borrowing borrowing means it's a loan which rate borrowing rate 
Boring rate is the higher of the two, always. So it's five percent that you have to choose. Five percent is the rate. Okay. The FRA rate is five percent. Now in the market, A if interest rate is seven percent, that means it's more than five percent. And the other scenario where market rate is less than the FRA. Under both conditions, we'll see. Okay, you can do it together also. You don't have to finish with seven percent first and then do with four percent. No, together do it both so that time is saved. Okay, so let's start loan payments. Okay, now first I'm going to make for seven percent and here I'm going to write for four percent. Both I'm doing together. So first interest payable on loan. What is the interest? Payable on loan. Okay, so what is the amount? Eight million. Eight million is the amount. You have to do your workings here. Eight million. Here also I'm going to do for the four percent. Eight million into which percent are you going to pay? The rate, the market, whatever the market rate at that rate you are going to calculate the interest first. Seven percent, four percent into. Remember, always you have to take the duration. Okay. You have to take the duration. What is the duration? Some of you might take two months saying that if it's in two months time. No, that is the starting. But how much? It is for, it will last for three months, three months. This is the duration. You should always take the fraction of the, this thing, duration of the project. So three months, three over 12. Here also is 3 over 12. When you take it, okay, remember this is 8 million. So this will be 140,000. It's a bracket because it's a payment. This will be 80,000. Okay, now we are coming to the FRA payment. The compensation. Either you are going to receive, either you are going to pay. Now tell me. Out of this two, seven and four percent, in which one? Okay, let's start with seven percent. You are going to pay or you are going to receive? You are going to receive. You are going to receive. Why? Because you have paid more, seven percent. But your FRA rate was five percent. You are supposed to pay less. Two percent difference is there. So you have to pay five percent, but you paid seven percent. So that two percent extra compensation you are going to receive now from the bank. So receivable. Whenever you are paying more in the market than the FRA, you are always going to receive the difference. Okay, so the difference is 8 million into what? 7% minus 5% is 2%. The difference only you are going to pay, but the fraction you have to take. So here it will be, sorry, it's a receivable, so it's positive 40,000. Second scenario where it was 4%, tell me, are you going to receive or pay? You are going to, you are going to, pay why because you have paid less in the market four percent but fr is five percent because no matter whether your interest rate goes up or down you have to pay at f it is fixed at five percent only so here it is payable eight million into one percent because difference between five and four percent is one percent into three over twelve which is twenty thousand in bracket because it's a payment now what's happening to the net result net it off 140 from there you deduct 40,000 it will be 100,000 negative 100,000 and here minus 80,000 minus 20,000 minus 100,000 okay what's happening if you see both should be 100,000 both should be 100,000 under FRA. This is the beauty of this. Why? Because it is fixed at 5%. No? So through this, what can you understand? Whether your interest goes up or down does not matter. You are paying at 5%. Now we'll see how. 8 million, take it 5% into 3 over 12. It will be 100,000 only. Doesn't it? So whether your interest rate went to 7% or whether it went down to 4%, you are paying 100,000 only. It's fixed at this rate. Because the balance, either you are receiving or you are paying the FRA payment. So it's at this rate. This is how you are hedging it. 
let's go through some features of FRA. Features of FRA. So, as you have seen in the question, companies protected from a rise in interest rate. Remember, the purpose of interest rate risk management is not always to protect against rise. Sometimes you have to protect against a fall in interest rate also if it's a deposit. If you are the one who is going to receive that interest, right? So you are protecting against both rise and fall in interest rate. Isn't it? That's what FRA is doing. It is protecting against both adverse movement and a favorable movement. So the good thing is they are protected against rise in interest rate. But the bad thing is you are you cannot benefit if your interest rate falls down, especially if it's a loan for a loan. Even if the interest rate falls to 4% for a loan, you have to pay at 5% only for FRA. So that's a disadvantage also. Advantage also, but with that disadvantage also comes. Then FRS are usually for amounts greater than 1 million. See, this is for writing purpose, I'm telling you. If you have to write, you can talk about advantages and disadvantages, which you have to do in the exam. No, it's just not purely calculation. So FRS are greater than 1 million, but if it's a counter tailor made, OTC over the counter, then according to the company's precise requirement, you can go for an FRA. Okay. And usually this can be hedged for a period of one month up to two years. FRA. Okay. Now, the last thing under FRA that you need to know. That FRA rates are set by the bank by analyzing the individual's company's spot yield rate. How do FRA rates are set by the bank? Banks are the ones who are going to set this rate. How do they do that? They go the they go through the company's spot yield curve. Have you heard about this spot yield curve? Think. Somewhere you have studied this in this AFM only. If you are sharp enough, if you have a sharp memory, okay, I'm not uh, Disregarding anyone who does who cannot uh, think about it or he just forgot. I'm just telling you That uh, if you can recall We have done this when we were calculating VAC weighted average cost of capital under that in, in investment appraisal we have done this Okay, we need the same knowledge again here this time to calculate so let's do a question on that because this this type of question also have come in the exam and you can get in the exam. So you have to be prepared for this also. Let's do a question on this. Okay, and that's it for FRA because after that we'll be moving on to the next hedging technique that is interest rate future. So let's go through this illustration too before we do a question, similar question to this. Okay, so here you have been given the yield curve for three years. Remember, for each year, the yield curves are different. Okay, it's not the same. If it was same, we didn't have to do all this work. Based on the first year, we know for the second and third year is the same, but that's not the case. Right, because each year, the risk increases. So that's why the risk increases, your yield curve also will increase based on that. You can see from here, 3.9, 4.25, 4 4.56. But how did they get the other two? Okay. At least for the first two years, they will give you before you have to predict for third year, fourth year, and that's the other years. Okay. So let's see. This means the stone company will have to pay interest at 3.96% if it wants to borrow money for one year and 4.25% if it wants to borrow for two years. Okay. An alternative to borrowing for two years is this throughout is to borrow for one year initially at this and then to borrow for another year in one year's time at an unknown rate. What does it mean? That means one year you can borrow at 3.96% and you can borrow for another one more year but the rate is unknown. Rather than taking for two years at a straight together, one year being at 3.96 and the second year 4.25, you take one year and then additional another one year but the rate is unknown that time so that time the company could fix that interest rate in one year's time by asking the bank to quote a rate at this 12 because it is after one year for the second year you want to find out in one year's time only for one year only right so how do you work out the quote
so the rate quoted by their bank would be r okay this is how they do the working whatever is here okay whatever is here they have already given a rate they have already given you the rate for second year they just told that if you want to borrow for two years one and two this is the rate this is already given to you this is not an answer that they have got what you have to do is you have to find out this rate this is the rate that you are working on in one year's time means for another one year you want to find this one which will go in the third year but if you are not understanding the years forget about the years we just want to find that rate for one year time in one year's time after the first year okay so on this you multiply 1 plus r another rate which you don't know but then it will be 1.0425 because 4.25 percent with that, that you add 1 and to the power 2 always because to the power 2 because it is in the second year it's always like this then make r the subject of the equation and find r which is 4.54 percent sorry this rate we are not fine i'm sorry this is not the rate we are finding this is already given for the third year like this sorry i'm sorry i i thought that was the same i got a little confused it's not this this is the question in the question the rate is like this okay so this gives r 4.54 percent so this is the rate i'm sorry what i told in the beginning okay it is that's why i was confused why in the third year it is like this no this this is the question all the three rates are given okay this is first year this is second year so based on this information you want to find fra rate which is this 4.54 percent like this you have to do the work first year will be given second year also will be given but to the power to make r the subject and find r that's it now based on that knowledge we are going to do a question similar to this 24 is to 36 fra wants to borrow money in two years time for a period of one year you understanding and before doing that question remember that there's a technical article that you have to read fra rates calculation of fra rates it is there on acc website please go and check so now let's do test to understanding one so here using the same thing what is it 1 plus r this will be always there 1 plus r will always be there multiplied with the second year this time what is second year 1.04252525 to the power 2 because it is for the second year equal to what is the third year third year is 1.0456 this 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 rate you have to use 4.56 with that 4.56 percent with that you have to add one that's why that's why 1.0456 to the power 3 because it's for the third year so now what make r the subject of the equation do you know how to make r the subject of the equation i'm assuming you know that okay so bring this this side it becomes division and then minus one so basically it will be like this to the power three divide 1.0425 to the power two minus one this will be your r okay if you work at r it will be 5.18 percent so this is fra rate 5.18 percent you understanding and if you see r will keep increasing you see 12 to 24 is 4.54 then it became 5.18 it will increase because your risk is increasing the more you are going towards it the longer the duration the greater the risk okay so that's it for fra now we are moving to the next hedging technique that is interest rate future so future hedging calculations because we know about future future is also similar to forward we fix a rate here the, if you see the steps are very similar to your currency future the three questions that you need to address this is same even in currency also what is the first question buy or sell future 
second how many contracts here also you have to find number of contracts but the way you calculate number of contracts little difference is there there's a fraction that is added here okay i will show you the formula then which expiry date should be chosen here also you have to choose the expiry date now whether you buy or sell future this is easier in interest rate because there is no currency to deal with no two currencies if it's a loan what do you have to do if it's a deposit what do you have to do i will show you the decision second step pay the initial margin and settle the transaction third profit or loss in the future okay by closing the future contract so these are the three steps similar to what we have done in currency also nothing new but there are some characteristics of irf that is interest rate future first underlying asset okay remember to decide whether you want to buy or sell contract that means buy or sell future okay interest rate futures are very much like bonds whether you are going to sell or purchase bond okay so when you have to borrow borrow money that means it's like borrowing money means you are like issuing you are selling bonds so sell future and when you have a deposit it's like you are buying equity sorry buying bonds like buying future so in short what you have to remember is borrowing sell future deposit buy future it's always like this because there's no currency involved here in fact compared to currency rate future interest rate future is easier because no currency to deal only one thing so whenever it's a borrowing you always sell future whenever it's a deposit you always buy future you remember this much is enough then second is future prices okay see this is little different here sometimes they give you the price sometimes they code in terms of percentage for example let's say your future price they will give you the interest rate future as 95.5 what does it mean deduct that 95.5 from 100 that will give you the interest rate this is how it works whenever they give you the price 95.5 deduct whatever the price they give from 100 the difference is the interest rate sometimes they don't give you the price sometimes they quote it in terms of interest rate let's say five percent that means 100 minus five so price is 95 you understanding so in this case the price is 95.5 so deduct it from 100 always 100 minus that market rate that's how you get the interest rate which is 4.5 percent then what you need to know is open and settlement prices okay in an exam question you may be quoted both the prices but when you are setting up the hedge which price should you use settlement price open price is not relevant for your calculation okay calculating number of contract this is the formula that you need to know what we did in the currency loan or deposit whatever the amount divided by the contract size that is okay with that we either multiplied or divided based on the exchange rate if we had to convert it into the exchange rate otherwise that in interest rate future the additional thing is added is that fraction loan div divided by contract duration loan period loan or deposit period in month divided by contract duration this thing is not there in currency rate future please understand do not get confused these two things are different that's why i always tell you unlearn what you have learned here when you're coming to the interest rate future so loan or deposit period in month let's say the loan is for five months contract duration contract duration means what contract future contract and future contract is always three months it's always three months okay unless the examiner in the exam they say specifically that future is for four month or five month but i've never seen a question it's always three months only so whatever the duration of the month uh, duration of the loan let's say five month so five divided by three or let's say the loan is for 10 months 10 divided by three let's say the loan is for one year 12 divided by three that's how it is and then you get the number of contract okay but mostly in interest rate you get a fixed number of contract mostly next ticks and tick values are not going to leave you they are here also okay how do you calculate the tick value amount of principal principal means it could be a loan or a deposit whatever it is that multiply by one basis point it they will give you all this basis point everything they will give you everything is given just 
multiply and find the tick value fraction of year okay then fraction of year we have one example for that let's say a three month euro yen future okay your deposit is 100 million tick size is 0.005 percent and it's for so how do you do this calculation 100 into three months they told three month three month future so three divided by 12 fraction of year they told that means future which is for three months divided by 12 you have to divide it by 12 so 3 over 12 into 100 into 0 0.005 percent because that is the tick size okay so the tick value will be 1,250 1, yen okay so now let's do a question so the first question on interest rate future here you have to calculate the number of contract one three month contract is for 1 million euro and in b you have to demonstrate the gain on the future exactly matches the extra interest on the loan okay so let's read the question global wishes to borrow 9 million euro from one month starting in five weeks time they are currently Easter is kind of 3% and the treasurer of the global decides to fix the rate by selling the interest rate future at 96.9. The market rate rises by 25 basis point to 3.25%. Okay, from 3 to, if you add 25 basis point with 3%, it increases to 3.25%. As soon as the loan is agreed, the treasurer closes out the global's position by buying a matching number of contract at 96.65. How do you approach this question? Okay, first we'll find the number of contracts. Okay, A. So number of contracts is 9 million divided by the contract size which is 1 million into okay into what the fraction. Okay. Remember the contract period is 3 months. But what about the this one? The loan duration what is the loan period for how long for one month so it will be one over three okay so how many contracts it is three contracts right b you have to find the gain on the future and extra interest on the loan You have to prove that they are matching okay so let's do that extra interest on the loan That means the interest in the open open market right without the future that's what we have to see if we are having a gain on the future means we have to there's a loss in the market in the spot market so here how much the increase uh, rise in interest rate 25 so just the difference because the extra only you have to work out on the extra so 25 or just write 25 percent okay on the 9 million loan into remember the fraction you have to take the duration of the uh, you have to take the proportion of the month that means it's one month over 12 it's always over 12 only to find the number of contracts it is divided by three because the future contract so it will be euro 1875 this is the cost now the gain should be equal to this gain on the future How do you get the gain on the contract? How do you do that? Three contracts, number of contracts, that is three into. How many ticks per contract?
How many ticks per contract? Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Because if it increases by twenty-five percent, okay, you have to pay twenty-five, right? Uh, remember how we paid for FRA? We paid whatever it is there in the market, whether it increase or decrease, we paid by that, and either we pay the extra if we are paying less, or if we paid more already, we are receiving the compensation. Same way here also we are paying, okay, the extra twenty-five percent, but it's a gain in the future okay so 25 ticks per contract you multiply it by 25 and what is it you have to find the value of one tick value of one tick value of one tick you have to work, do a working here you have to first find out value of one tick because you have to multiply it with value of one tick what is the value of one tick it is simply the contract size okay which is 1 million into 3 over 12 because the future is for 3 months remember future and value of take we use for future only so this is how you understand whether it's 1 or, one or 3 okay it's 3 because tick relates to future so you are using the future contract over 12 months okay and with the contract size 1 million not the 9 million into 0 0.0001 here they didn't give it in this question but they will give you this. This is given. Okay. This question they didn't give. But because this is an euro. For euro this is the tick size. Okay. This is this will be given. Don't worry. Here it's not given. But this is the contract size. But you don't have to memorize the tick size and all. Okay. You don't have to memorize. They will give you it. They will give you this value. Okay. So after that it will be. This is also 25 in this case, so multiply with 25. So what is the answer? Euro 1875. You see both are matching. Now we are going to do test understanding 3. With this understanding. Assume today is 25th of uh, Jan. A company is going to borrow 2 million in 2 months time for a period of 3 months. Remember, in 2 months time for a period of 3 months okay because it's a borrowing will they be in a fair way where the interest rate goes down or up up they don't want the interest rate to rise remember for a borrowing they will be having a fear when interest rate rises for a deposit if interest rate goes down okay from its current level of five percent current level is five percent so it wants five hundred thousand three months interest rate future this is the size you don't have to worry about currency and all here okay March and June, two futures are given with the two prices. And uh, one more thing, I wanted to uh, go back in the previous question and explain you as that why 25 basis point because if you see here opening and closing 96 and 96.65, the price went down, right? 25 so that is the difference is 25 if you check in the terms of interest rate also you can check from 3 to 325 percent it's 25 it's the same that's why the result is same in this and this okay but that is not an issue but the main thing is that 25 is got uh, you got is like this the ticks okay not uh, what i told the 25 basis point but in this case both are same so yeah now calculate the result of the relevant future hedge on one assumption that interest rate have risen to seven percent and future price move to this one so how do you do this remember when you do a future question normally start with the three questions first question buy or sell remember it's a borrowing borrowing you sell because it's a borrowing you sell future sell future number two number of contracts find out two million divided by five 
0.5 million into this time the duration of the hedging is three months future contract is three months so it's four con four contracts number three which expiry date march or june see today is 25th of jan okay a company is going to borrow in two months time for a period of three months what does it mean calculate from jan feb march that is 25th of march right so which expiry date march from jan if you calculate okay february march actually in two months time for a period of uh, three months right but you are not taking three months from 25th of jan no today could be any day Okay, so it is March because it is going to expire on the date after the expiry is March. Sorry, the future which is going to expire after the hedging period is March future, which is 25th of March. So March future. Okay. I think I got a, I, I confused you a bit there. Okay, so when you're calculating it in two months time, sorry, you are borrowing in two months time means what you are borrowing it on 25th of March. So from 25th of March onwards for three months after 25th of March, you have to hedge for three months, but you are borrowing it on 25th of March and the future which is going to expire after 25th of March is March future. That's why you are taking March future okay because it's confused it i got little confused because they told in two months time and for three months whether you're starting three months from 25th of jan or two months no it is from the time you're going to borrow that you're going to hedge okay so that's the thing now next what two months later Calculate the interest, okay? What would be the interest? Amount that you have to hedge is 2 million into 3 over 12 because it's for 3 months. But it will be divided by 12 only. A portion of a year you have to take when you're taking interest and 7%, the market interest, which is 35,000 now in the future market okay in the future market you have to find the number of ticks first how do you find the number of ticks opening minus closing future price so opening is 94.90 closing is 92.90 okay and multiply the answer by 100 okay once you divide it uh, minus it how much it is 2 multiplied by 100 always you have to multiply by 100 to get the number of ticks so 200 ticks okay find the value of the tick How do you find the value of a tick? 
it is the contract size which is 500,000 into 3 over 12 as I told you feature is 3 months and over 12 because portion of the year multiply by for dollar this is the amount of tick after decimal there are three zeros and then one equal to 12.5 zero this they will give you okay so now there's a profit on the future what is the profit because you are selling at this rate and you are buying at this rate so it's a profit right profit on the future is this this is the formula ticks into tick value into number of contracts always is like this so ticks is 200 tick value is 12.5 and contract is 4 so the profit is 10,000 once you get this profit deduct it from your interest because it reduces your overall cost net cost your interest reduces it was 35,000 from there the profit of the future is deducted and now your cost is just 25,000 okay now we are moving towards basis in interest rate future remember we had to find basis in the currency future also same thing but here it's little different okay but this thing is same spot minus future okay here when you're finding it you have to deduct your interest from the hundred because that's how you're going to get the future price sometimes if you are given the interest rate five percent you cannot go and deduct five percent from the spot rate no because spot prices i mean when they are giving the spot they are giving it in terms of price not interest rate so future also has to be in price so whatever the interest they are giving deduct it from 100 like this 100 minus the spot minus the future price for example spot rate is 5 percent future price is 95.5 okay so you cannot go and deduct 5 percent minus 95.5 no either change the future price into interest rate or change the uh, spot rate the spot rate into price so just deduct 100 by 5 and deduct it from 95.5 100 minus 5 percent minus 95.5 which will give you negative 0.5 percent that's how you're going to work on basis then how we had lock-in rate for currency here also we have okay and assumption is same basis is going to reduce at the expiry date that those assumptions are same okay so with interest rate the lock-in rate is like this 100 minus current future price plus unexpired basis but it has to be deducted by 100 minus uh, right, like you have to minus it from 100 to find the interest rate right now let us do a question on this with the basis price sorry basis risk before we move on to options on interest rate future test understanding four superb is using june interest rate future to cover the interest rate risk on a three month one million borrowing starting on 31st may at the time 500,000 future contracts are set up on 1st of jan the rate is five percent future price is this one and basis reduce okay a b c there are three okay so c is basically you have to comment on a and b okay always follow the order of the requirement given to you in your exam first a then b then c because it's always like that that you sometimes need uh, sometimes they are independent questions but most of the time it has been seen that for part b you need a and for part c you might need b support so always do it in the order for the safe side a calculate the financial result of the future hedge on the assumption that the rate is four percent calculate the likely lock-in rate for the future hedge and has the financial result so lock-in rate and see comment okay you should know how to comment also that also i will show you how to comment but first you need to calculate because without calculation you cannot comment 
so you definitely need to do do a and b first so let's do a okay so first you go and do it in the transaction like in the market what would be the amount that you have to pay okay but before that for future are you going to buy or sell you have to decide you have to sell because it's a boring okay so sell future because it's a boring and number of contracts what is the number of contract that you need you have to borrow 1 million contract size is 500000 into remember it is for 3 months the future for how many months you have to cover three which is two so two contracts okay at which price sell future at 95.48 this opening price already given now they told interest rating is 4 percent right so what are you going to do the transaction i'm going to write okay which is 1 million into 4 percent into how many months three months remember it's three over twelve this is a transaction you don't need to take three over three this is not future proportion of the years for three months so how much you are paying ten thousand ten thousand what was the rate five percent it went down to four percent So you have to you have to pay additional this thing there will be a loss in the future you are selling at 95.48 how at what you are buying you have to find find out this price for that you need basis now do you understand same how we have done for currency we had to find the closing future price you also have to do the same so let's go and do the working first okay we'll leave some space and do the working base is working first we'll do the normal big method the manual method and then we'll go by the lock-in rate later on for part b which is shortcut first of jan 31st of may and 30th June. First of Jan because today is first of Jan. Okay, contracts are set up on first of Jan. Okay, starting on 31st May you have to borrow and Jan. So 31st. So if you are taking from me. and web month april april may and june on 31st may you are borrowing for three months so starting from 31st may the whole month of june okay may oh wait i think there is some doubt okay yeah 31st may so th after 31st may the contract that you are taking is june contract and it is expiring on 30th of june that's why 30th of june okay these are the three dates that are important 
so s o f r s 5% but you cannot take 5% let's take 100 minus 5 so 95 then the future price opening future price which is 95.48 the difference between these two is the basis basis could be positive or negative this is negative 0.48% okay remember it reduces proportionally right so how do you do that see from jan to june there are six months no out of six months how much you have not used how how many months you didn't utilize from 31st may to 30th june only one month so that one month is known as unexpired basis so just take one month of this one over six which will be 0 0.08 you understanding and here the spot is four percent Four percent means ninety-six. Okay, so if it's ninety-six, this and this you add, and you will get the difference, which is ninety-six point zero eight. So ninety-six point zero eight is the closing future price. This will be zero. This day base is zero, right? So ninety-six point zero eight. So go here. And 96.08. So you are buying at uh, you are buying at more. So it's a loss of how much? Zero point six percent. You multiply this loss by the number of contract and the contract size, five hundred thousand. To get the total loss for three months. For three months. Which will be okay, multiply by this. Remember to take the fraction. So loss will be 1500. So already you're paying 10,000, then lost 1100, 1500, then 11,500 is the total payment under future. Now we are going to go to part B to do the lock-in rate. We are going to find the same closing feature price but using lock-in rate. Okay, 100 minus 95.48 minus what is the basis? 0.8% which will give you 4.6%. Okay, so just multiply that 4.6% and see by 1 million into 3 months, 11,500. You are getting the same result. Just see. You see? Now, path C, comment. So what are you going to comment? That the result is same under both calculation. Okay, the lock-in rate is used as a shortcut for your exam to save time where you do not know the closing spot rate now let us go to interest rate options options on interest rate future even for options this is very easy okay traded options are options to buy or sell future a call option is right to buy future. A put option is right to sell future. Everything is similar to your currency this thing. So I can quickly go. And remember, you always buy the option. Okay. Either you buy the right to buy or buy the right to sell. But you buy the option. Go through this. If you remember this, halas. You have understood everything. So in the cash market, if it's a deposit, in the future market, you are going to buy future. 
in option you are going to buy call okay and if it's a loan you are going to sell future and in the option you are going to buy put okay you need to memorize this this is your table that you need the most now let's go through this example where you have many exercise price and you have to select which one if it's a call option remember call option is deposit don't go by call or put the name call option in the interest rate is for deposit deposit means you want highest net receipt and if it's a loan which is put option lowest total payment how do you do that just deduct your premium from the exercise price if it's a payment sorry if it's a receipt and if it's a payment add so let's check the first one for deposit exercise price 93.5 okay 93.5 means exercise convert it into exercise price which is 6.5 percent because cost is given in terms of percent so you cannot go and deduct 93.5 minus 2.2 no 6.5 minus the premium which is 2.2 so 6.5 minus 2.2 4.3 that's how you get the net receipt okay and if you compare the highest net receipt is for what the first exercise price that is 93.5 hence 93.5 has to be chosen if it's a loan lowest this time you add why because the exercise price you have to pay also the premium you have to pay both are the cost for you for a payment it's a cost so add both the cost and the loan interest and the lowest payment now option heading calculation the steps step one same four questions that are there in the currency options number one call or put very easy for borrowing it's a put for deposit it's a call how many contracts very similar to how you have got for future which expiry date same like future which exercise or strike price just now we have saw lowest payment highest receipt step two pay the premium step three compare with the market interest rate compare the option price with the market interest rate and decide are you going to exercise or not and step four the cash flow the net cash flow okay beware that if the number of contracts need the rounding sometimes you might not get the exact number of contract you might get 3.5 3.8 so are you are uh, let's say 3.8 contracts so i either you are going to take three or four contracts okay usually you take the less one right so the balance that the balance that you didn't take you're going to do some of the borrowing or deposit in the market interest rate even if you have used option even if you have exercised the option now this is your decision point whether to exercise or not general rule is if there is an adverse moment exercise the option if there's a favorable moment don't exercise the option okay and double check if exercising the option results in a loss are you going to exercise it no second you that therefore you must always have a profit on the future when exercising and a potential loss if you allow the option to lapse understood if you exercise the option always be profit if you do not exercise the option there will be loss in the future now let us do a question test your understanding five it is now 31st of july okay you need to borrow 10 million in one month time for six month period current interest rate is five percent five hundred thousand three months september interest rate option is given call and put four exercise prices you have to calculate if the interest rate increases to five seven point five percent and future move to 93 in one month's time so the moment you get the option immediately start answering the four questions first question is from step one call or put it's a put because it's a borrowing second how many contracts 10 million okay it is 10 million divided by 500,000 into for how many months are you taking the loan six months 
for a six month period in one month's time for a six month period you should always go for the six month period the moment you see the word period that is the amount of the loan okay don't go and start taking one month because they say in one month's time no six months six divided by three because future is for three months which is 40. third question which expiry date this case no doubt it is september okay which exercise price this is a payment so you have to add your premium with your rate convert all this into rate 100 minus 94.5 okay for this there is no cost so it is just the interest rate okay but for the others you have a premium to deduct S sorry premium to add let's take for the second one Hundred minus ninety four point seven five. In terms of interest, how much it will be? Five point two five percent. Five percent. Four point seven five percent. Okay. Five point five percent. And just add this cost: zero point one eight, zero point six five, and zero point one two. Okay, these are also in percentage only. This will be 5.5%, 5.25 plus 0.18 because we are taking put option, so you have to add the put. Okay, 5.43, 5.65, 5.87. Remember, this is borrowing, so you need the lowest payment lowest cost so what is the what is the lowest cost 5.43 which is 94.75 so this exercise price has to be chosen okay now you need to calculate premium this is option remember so premium is 0.18 percent let's calculate premium Zero point one eight percent multiply by what is the amount? How many contracts? Forty contracts into contract size, which is five hundred thousand into three over twelve. Why? Option is for three months. The word premium is is an option. So option is for three months. Hence, nine thousand is the premium. Okay. Now find out. In the transaction market what will it be in the spot market you are paying the interest 7.5 percent after it increased they told right interest rise to 7.5 percent at this interest you are paying on 10 million for six months Three hundred seventy-five thousand. now future options actually options on future are you going to exercise or not? So exercise the put option. That means you are going to sell at 94.75. They told the future price is going to go down to 93. Okay. Did they give you the price? They told 93. Right? So it's a profit. We have told that when you exercise the option, you are going to get a profit in the future. Because it's an option on the future. That's why you will see you are going to get this prices. First, this one will be exercise price only. And this is the closing future price that you have to take. Okay. Which will be 1.75 percentage only. 
so when you want to take the total profit remember to multiply this 1.75 by 100 which is one to get the number of ticks so 175 ticks into number of contract contract size and never forget the fraction 3 12 because profit is from the options and it is for three months this could be confusing sometimes you could take six months sometimes three months remember it's in the spot six months otherwise three months and 87500 is the profit okay so the net interest cost will be from 375,000 deduct your gain which is 87,500 hence the cost will be 287,500 plus the premium there's a premium to add which have we forgot 9,000 Okay. Comparison of options and future. Okay. So interest rate option over future behaves in exactly the same way as future contracts if we decide to exercise. Let's say for call option, okay, we buy future right if we exercise we buy future at the option exercise price before sending at the normal future price that's what we have seen in the question previously also your opening price will be the exercise price but when it comes to the closing that is a normal closing future price okay then if closing future price is not given we estimate it by using unexpired basis now let us do one final question on option on interest rate future before we move on to caps flows and colors test your understanding six before we do test your understanding six let me tell you that there's a technical article on interest rate future and options okay so please go and read the technical article now let's start test your understanding six this one i have included the answer here in order to save your time because this answer is uh, pretty long enough okay here you need to borrow five million for six months starting in four months time on first of august the current rate is 3.5 percent okay there's a risk that interest rate will change over the next few years uh, sorry buy up to 0.5 percent either way remember when a question comes like this where they do not say whether it will increase or decrease you have to do both you have to increase it by 0.5 percent and show the effect decrease it by 0.5 percent and show the effect okay they can borrow at 25 basis point above the rate that is what is the rate 3.5 add 25 basis with it so that is the rate that they can borrow you have been given the three future which you have to select and here you have to decide between call and put and also you have to decide you have to use future b option on future and recommend which method the company should use in this case okay i will just take you through the answer and through the answer i will explain you so first tell me some questions that you can answer me whether this is a call uh, sorry are you going to buy or sell future you are going to sell future and which okay sell future because it's a borrowing which one which future june september december tell me
September future. Yes, you're going to take September future. Why? Because they told it is starting in four months time. Okay, which is April. So add six months with it. May, June, July, April, May, June, July, August and September. Six months. Right? That's why September. Number of contracts. You have to borrow 5 million. So 5 divided by 0 0.5 into it is for 6. So 6 over 3. What is the number of contracts? Twenty. Twenty contracts. Okay. In options, what are you going to do? Call or put? Put. Because it's a borrowing. And which? Same. September. So let's see. Yes. You need to sell 20. So those things are solved. You have to find the closing future price. Remember, you are going to sell at 96.1. But you have to know at what price you have to buy. For that, you have to work out the closing future price based on the basis risk. Okay, so the working is here. 1st April, 1st August, 30th September. Because in 4 months time, you have you are going to start borrowing. Which is 1st of April. Because April is the 4th month, right? Opening date is 3.5. Future price is given. Okay. You have to convert this into price. And this is already given. So this is the basis. You have to reduce it proportionately. From April to September, how many months? Six. Out of six, how many months are not utilized? August to September. August, September, two months. So two over six or one over third. One third of 0 0.4, which is this. Okay, here they have given in working 1 and 2. You see the fraction 2 over 6. So apply 2 over 6 and you will be getting 0 0.13. Okay, here you are not given the closing spot rate. So use the locking rate, which is this. So this is the opening future. You know the unexpired basis minus it from 100. This is the closing future price and convert this okay into this price three point seven seven percent okay just wait a minute So here, if you have to borrow, okay, you have to add 0.25% with this, which is 4.02% because you can borrow at 25 basis point above the rate. Okay, so now using feature, what will be your price? This multiply the, the lock-in rate, just multiply the lock-in rate with the amount that you have to borrow with 6 or 12 because 6 months. So this is the amount. Okay, let's read the tutorial note. Although it wasn't necessary to calculate the closing future price to find the financial result, workings below show how it been calculated in this case using example of this one increase and decrease. Okay. Now, remember it can increase or decrease. What did they say? Just give me a minute. They told by 0.5 percent okay so this 0.5 percent you have to add with this and deduct with it do not take this 25 basis point with this without taking 25 basis point with this okay this is only for borrowing you have to add 25 with 3.5 percent understanding but when you're taking increase or decrease it's only with 3.5 percent so 3.5 plus 0.5 3.5 
minus 0 0.5 that means 3 or 4 percent okay that's why you are taking here 3 or 4 percent so let's assume this is 3 and 4 that means price is 97 or 96 and already the basis is given so either this will be the future price or this will be the future price okay now we can do the calculation okay before going to the future interest payable remember when you are paying interest payable you have to add 25 basis point with 3.5 percent that will make it 3.75 percent but this will be now 4 percent in this case and 4 and 3 percent in this case so 4 plus 0.25 you have to add this when you are borrowing interest payable so 4.25 into 6 over 12 into 5 million 3.25 into 6 over 12 into 5 million this and this after that we are going to the future we are selling at this price under both remember under both we are selling at 96.1 only when we are buying this is the rate that we have just calculated at four and three percent at this it's a gain because you are buying at less but here it's a loss so add the profit deduct the loss okay remember this percentages you have to multiply it multiply by 20 contract contract size 500,000 and 3 over 12 because future is for 3 over 12 then only you will get this figure after that the net financial position will be same this is the exact same thing that we have got for FRA also remember forward and future okay effective interest rate see you should know how to find effective interest rate this thing we have not done in any question i'm going to help uh, show you here okay in case if you have to find the percentage how do you get it whatever the financial position you got here divided by 5 million this is the amount that you have to hedge the loan into reciprocal not 6 over 12 12 over 6 you understood do the reciprocal it is 6 over 12 do 12 over 6 when we have when we have to find the effective interest rate and multiply by 100 that's how you get the effective interest rate this is the person it will be same now we are moving on to option so option we have already set that we are going to buy put option 20 contract it will be same exercise price is 96.4 wait yes only one exercise price nothing to help and September so this is the premium 0.36 percent because they told premium quoted as annual percentages I'm going a little quick because we have done enough questions so that you will be able to understand now so multiply that premium with number of contract into contract size into 3 over 12 never forget the fraction option is also for three months so 9,000 is a premium now with four percent with three percent decide whether we are going to exercise or not at four percent we are going to exercise because in the future we got a profit remember that also will help you if you want to compare with the price that also you can do but this will save time here you are getting a loss in the future so do not exercise this will save your time if you go by that if you go by the future if you want to want to go by the price you can go compare the exercise with this prices and check what is exercise price by the way Ninety six point four. Okay, if you want to compare it with price, ninety six with ninety six point four. If it's four percent, it's ninety six, and it's a put option. So you're definitely going to exercise here because the price is higher under exercise. But if it's the other way around, this becomes ninety seven, and it's a put option. So you are not going to exercise here because this is lower. Uh, this is higher. Exercise is lower. That's why. Okay. So you compare.
because you are not exercising so this is not applicable not applicable not applicable here you have already got the closing future price opening is the exercise price compare the both gain is this much calculate the total gain multiply it by the contract size number of contract and 3 over 12 because option is for 3 months this is the profit and this will be zero okay premium will be same under both this already we have got the interest payable so just add the gain with this and get the net financial position here the net financial position will be premium plus the interest payable that's it and if you want to find the effective interest rate it's the same thing this financial position that means 102,000 divided by 5 million do the reciprocal 12 over 6 into 100 this and this but if you use the future the interest rate is fixed at this if i using option you see you have different rates okay so now if interest rate falls what can you conclude at the end calculation is over if interest rate falls in the future if interest rate fall that means at this this will give you a favorable advantage option will give you better than future right option will give you favorable rate if the interest rate increases it is the future that will give you the lower interest rate so before deciding which remember at the end they told recommend so before deciding which method is preferred company needs to consider what the more likely future interest rate movement will be yes whether it is more likely to increase or decrease if it increases option if it decreases future sorry if it decreases option if it increases future okay now let us go to call caller floor and cap caps caps means another word for cap is ceiling okay just look at your ceiling that is the top right that's like a limit cap means you are putting a limit on the top side and cap is usually for the borrower why because borrower wants to hedge against the rise of interest rate right so what do they do they put a ceiling that beyond this their interest rate cannot go up that is the max or in other words you can say buying a put option over the interest rate future right that's what borrower do they buy put option over the interest rate future when a borrower wants to hedge against a rise of interest rate they buy a put option okay so cap is another name for this put option over the interest rate future it just is the put option where is floor is the downside this is used by the depositor who wants to hedge against the risk of interest rate fall they buy a call option another word for floor is so such an option is called a floor okay now there are some terminologies that you have to know and uh, what is caller okay we'll come to that but before knowing it a company buys an option right in an option what happens when the interest rate is when there is an adverse moment in the interest rate you exercise the option and you head yourself if there's a favorable moment in interest rate you do not exercise the option and take the advantage but but because you are taking that advantage of favorable movement in interest rate you have to pay a huge amount of premium that makes option very expensive right then futures also correct that's why we are coming up with this caller to protect to, to lower that cost of uh, options we can bring down that cost further by bringing caller caller is like it's very flexible compared to option where rather than just going straightly buying the option okay you go through a caller in caller what do you do you limit the ability to take advantage of the favorable moment you understand you are driving down the cost that means your premium is reducing now because your ability to enjoy the favorable moment is limited now because of the caller that's what caller does we are going to show this through diagram 
how it does. For example, for a borrower, if he wants to buy a cap, that means a put option, normally, it will be very expensive. But rather, now what he can do for a borrower, he buys a put option, correct? But also he sells a floor at the same time. Simultaneously, he does two, two things. He buys a put option, sells the floor. That is, sells the call option. Floor is call option, cap is put option. You have to think like this. Okay, remember it like this. Cap, put option, floor, call option. Okay, so he buys a put option, sells a call option. Or buy up call a cap, sell a floor. You can say in any way. On the same future contract, on the same contract, not two different contracts, but with different exercise price. Remember that. You're not buying or selling at the same exercise price. We'll show you through a question. Okay. The floor sets a minimum cost. Okay. What happens here? This is for the depositor. The counterpart is willing to pay the company for this guarantee of a minimum income. That means company gets paid for limiting its ability to take advance of the favorable moment if interest rate falls below the flow rate. So in this case, imagine if the interest rate goes below the flow rate. Can you take the advantage? No. You will not enjoy, but your counter, cou counterparty will do. Why? Because you are selling, no? You're selling the call option, remember. So once you're selling the call option, if interest rate falls below the flow level, you cannot take the advantage, but your counterparty will take the advantage. He is going to get the benefit. How? We'll show you through a question and also with diagrams. Go through this diagram. Before explaining you the diagram, okay, I will first tell you why it is named as collar. Just see the diagram. Does the, it looks like a collar, right? Collar of your shirt. That's zigzag. Even your collar is like that, V-type. Or little zigzag. It's like that collar only. Goes up again comes to that point if, if it goes down again it comes up to that point that's why it is collar named as collar because it looks like a collar look at the diagram <coughs> okay so here this is from the point of loan depositor has a different diagram but let's first understand from the point of loan because loan is easier to understand once you understand this depositing is just the opposite here you first buy a put option Whichever the whatever the interest rate is above the line below the line in between the line that is the open market interest rate Okay So At 10% what do you do? That 10% and 8% are like your floor and cap 10% is your cap that is the max 8% is your floor In between that it could be anything. Okay The problem does not come Okay, see, there is no problem in the in between region between 8 and 10 percent. There's no problem, no issue. Problem comes when something the cost goes above 10 percent or it falls below 8 percent. Then only the problem comes. Then only you have to worry. Then only you have to take action. Understood? So at 10 percent, that is like your cap. You are buying a put option. That means you are setting a limit on the maximum cost. Above this cost will not go. So company is protected. Whatever the cost is above 10%, you don't have to pay. You are protected. Okay. If, okay, and then at 8%, that is a flow, you are selling it. It's a call option. Okay. So if your interest rate goes below 8%, you are setting a limit. Minimum cost is 8%. Be, be beyond that, if it goes down, you cannot take the advantage. Who is going to get the benefit? Counterpart is going to get the benefit because you're selling the call option to the counterparty. That means counterpart is buying that call option from you. You're understanding? So he, he is going to get the benefit. It's a loss for you, gain for counterparty. This is how caller works. If I understood this, caller is nothing older this. Old is, it is only this explanation and then you just do the question, that's it. It is not something very complicated that you have, uh, like you have created in your mind. Caps, flow, collar, especially collar. People get scared. I know my students get scared when they hear these terms. That is very difficult, very difficult. No, I don't think after this explanation, it will be very difficult. Try to do questions. It will be very easy. It's very easy. Trust me. Next. So basically, collar means 
putting a minimum and a maximum limit to the interest rate payment or receipt both okay it enables a company to convert a floating rate into a semi fixed rate of interest so now you need to memorize this thing if it's a loan interest you always buy a put option sell a call option if it's a deposit interest you buy call option plus you sell put option you understanding always and in caller you do two things together remember that's how you remember caller cap just buy put option floor just call option but caller two things together buy put option sell call option different exercise price remember Depo uh, deposit is the opposite buy call option sell put option okay keep the diagram in front of you if you are doing a question on caller until you do not memorize it now this diagram is the 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 deposit it is also very similar but in this case when the interest rate goes down company is protected when the interest rate goes up because it's deposit you cannot take the advantage above 9% counterparty benefits in the low what happened when interest rate went down counterparty benefited you lost when it went up you you are protected deposit is just the opposite just reverse it that's it reverse your position so if you understood call if sorry if you understood your uh, interest properly your loan properly deposit you will understand i you, i don't have to work hard in on deposit it's just the opposite that's it understand one thing very proper clearly that's how you learn don't try to learn two things together you will get confused learn one thing very properly the other thing you will automatically know okay that's the way of learning when they, when there are two or three things which are just opposite of each other okay so now we are going to do a question before we move on to the interest rate swap and subtraction test your understanding 7 okay here you are calculate the effective interest rate the company will pay using a caller if it rises to 9.5% future moves to 90.2 this rise to this falls to this and future price moves to this you have been given the options okay company wishes to borrow 10 million on 1st of march for 3 months they can borrow at this rate this is 8% all these things is uh, about that they are going to head using this 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 to protect and also caller okay callers has been asked in the exam it can be asked so you have to be prepared for it uh, from the point of calculation as well as you need to write also you have to be able to write on it so here how do you start this is borrowing okay so normally in option it's a put option in the borrowing normally okay and at what exercise price are you going to take 92 because your interest rate is 8% so this is the exercise price you are going to use march or june is it march or june first of march for 3 months you are taking okay so you are going to take the march option because after 1st of march it is 31st i mean the contract which is going to expire is the march contract 31st of march okay and when you go by the caller what do you do this is borrowing so you buy normally this one at this exercise price you are buying put but you are selling call also march only but exercise price will be different remember that remember that okay so you are buying march 92 you are buying at this rate buying put selling call at 93 so that your overall premium is reduced 
what would be your premium just check this is the premium 0 0.2 and 0 0.15 deducted the difference is your premium okay so now let us do a and b a if it rises to 9.5 percent here it rises to 9.5 percent it rises above 8 percent okay so the moment okay i will show you that diagram here here it is eight percent above this if it goes you are going to exercise the option so that it comes again here you have to exercise it it exit the cap the moment it exit the cap you're going to exercise the put option but you have to find the cost okay they want the effective interest rate to find the effective interest rate okay with okay we'll uh, do it here Nine point five percent plus two percent. Why plus two percent? Because they told they can borrow at SOFR at a fixed margin of two percent. You have to add two percent with it. So when it rises, okay, the amount that have it in, the amount that increased plus that two percent and the premium you have to add what is the premium 0 0.15 this you are going to receive and you are going to pay this premium that means it will be minus 0 0.5 with this you have to add add what You are going to exercise so the difference between the exercise price and the closing future which is 92 and future price moved to 90.2 so deducted that means it's a profit the gain basically you are adding the this is the gain in the this portion is the gain by exercising the option so tell me what is it? Remember when you are taking the interest rate here, okay? The difference it will be one point eight percent. This is 1.8 percent, 11.5 percent, and minus 0 0.05. Okay, there is something, there is a mistake somewhere. Because the final answer, if you see here, it is giving, I will tell you the answer, 9.75%.
just want to find out how it is. Okay. Okay, this will be This has to be deducted. It's a gain. Okay. And this has to be added. So that's how you're getting 9.75%. Because 11.5 plus 0 0.05 minus 1.8. Now, B, if it falls to 4.5%, if you have taken a caller, you cannot take the advantage of that fall. Your counterpart is going to get the benefit. So here, interest rate have fallen below the flow. So bank will exercise his call option. Remember, you are selling the call option to the bank. So bank will exercise his option, obviously, because bank is going to get the benefit. So here, bank will exercise the option, call option that you have sold him. So here, at 4.5%, you have to add 2%. Okay. The premium will be same. Plus minus 0 0.2. Plus 0 0.15. This is the premium. With it. Minus. 96.1. Plus 93 the difference because this is the exercise price 93 it will be 9.65 percent this time you have to deduct it because it's a loss for your side Now basically this is minus but then it will be added because all these are cost this is cost premium is added this also will be added it's a loss for you right so loss will be added with the cost hence 9.65 so this is how you have to do the caller uh, question now we'll be moving to the interest rate swap so now we are going to talk about interest rate swap and this question is what do i say easiest question because it's very straightforward right so an interest rate swap is an arrangement where parties agree to swap a floating rate of interest payment for a fixed stream of interest payment or vice versa floating for fixed or fixed for floating anything no exchange of principal remember unlike in currency there is no exchange of principal only the interest rate on the loan so here company involved are termed as counterparties second remember when you have to write about swap these are the points you can write that swap can run for up to 30 years that means for long-term hedging swap is good 
swaps can be used to hedge against an adverse moment in interest rate let's say company has 400 million floating lo loan okay and interest rates are likely to rise over next five years so what do you do for the first five years you enter into a swap for the for, you change your variable to fix you get into a swap with the counterparty to swap into a fix for the next five years after the fi five years over that means from the six year onwards start paying the floating rate normally right without the swap a swap why do we do go for swap because it can be used to obtain cheaper finance that means through swap you can borrow at much better rate than borrowing directly that's why we go for swap now calculations that are based on splitting gains remember gains are split between the counterparty if the if the question is silent on how the gains are split it has to be equal equal okay 50 50 and if they tell that 40 percent goes to this party 60 percent goes to that party then according to proportion you have to take okay now let's do a question interest rate swap okay if you understood this question you will understand any swap because all interest rate swap questions are same the way you present is same here he wishes to and you will always be given two variable and two fix rate for the two parties okay and you have to decide which company is going to pay what okay i will show you how so company a wishes to raise 10 million okay and to pay interest at floating rate but he can borrow at fix at 10 percent of floating rate this is the floating rate for company b same fixed rate is 13 percent floating rate is 2 percent but he wants to prefer fixed rate now given that the savings are split equally savings means the gain okay you have to calculate an effective swap rate so let's do okay you should always find out okay company a company with the difference between the two fixed floating to understand which company is taking what under the swap fixed here it is 10 percent okay is it yeah and 13 percent for b here it is s plus one percent s plus two percent and here if you take the difference 13 minus 3 3 percent and here it is ss will get cancelled so one percent okay so if you carefully see under both fixed and floating a has a comparative advantage because a has a lower fixed cost as well as floating cost compared to b but under which one a has more difference that rate only a has to take whenever you are in this condition where both are low for one particular company deciding factor is which difference is more three percent is more no that is for the fixed rate so a has to go for the fixed rate b will be going for the floating rate under swap this is how you decide now a fixed b floating or variable now if you have to find the gain this is how you find once you found the difference between the two difference of the differences understood so 3 minus 2 is 2 percent this 2 percent will be divided equally among the two a and b 1 percent and 1 percent so this is the gain okay when you after this step is done now you present your swap okay this is how you do that a and b you start with without swap first see without said they'll be choosing that rate which they are not going to choose with the swap the opposite the worse worse off so he's going to go for variable s plus one percent and this one is going going to go for 13 percent okay now the gain one percent and one percent because of the gain deduct the gain from without swap 
which will be s here okay just s because 1 1 will get cancelled and 13 minus 1 is 12 percent so this is the interest rate after swap after swap you have to get this s and this 12 percent isn't that what they always wanted to do just see Company A wishes to pay at floating rate only. Company B wishes to pay at fixed rate only. So whatever their wish, their wish is true now. It's always will be true under swap. A is paying at S and B is paying at fix. Okay. But that's not it. Now with swap. He is paying 12%. Sorry, not 12%, 10%. And S plus 2%. Okay, leave some space here. After the space, you write this. Now, A to B, B to A. Remember when you do this, the difficult part is in the last part. Everything else you can do without swap, you know, gain, you know. Uh, the difference is the interest rate after swap. With swap also, you know, the difficult part is here. To set this right how to set this right always start with the variable variable because variable is only s who is going to pay that as and who is going to receive that as under swap that is the difficult part once that is solved fix is just the balance balancing part always with the variable first okay how do you decide who is going to pay variable and who is going to do this how do you decide that tell me it's very simple just check which company is having the variable after swap which company is that a a a is the one who is having that interest rate after swap so a is the one who is going to pay s in bracket because it's a payment and b is going to receive that s under swap understood When it's a receipt, it's with that bracket. The one who's going to pay, it's in the bracket. And what about the fixed rate? What about the fixed rate? This is S. Hmm? Check. B is having 12%. So B is going to pay the fixed rate. Obviously. How much? How much? How much B is going to pay? To know that. Okay. He has to have 12%. Correct? But if you see here. He is already paying S plus 2. This is S, not 5, S. He is already paying S plus 2 percent. Okay. So just deduct this to 10 minus, uh, 12 minus 2. So 10 percent. So he is paying 10 percent and he is going to receive that 10 percent. Do you understand? No? Okay. See, the thing is, from this part, okay, this table, with swab, okay, you have to do this adjustment, you have to add all, and it has, to, and at the end, you have to get this result. Okay, so here, let's start with B, S plus 2. S plus 2, this is with swap he's paying, this is a payment, put bracket. So, with swap he's paying S plus 2. He's going to receive that S from A. I'm talking about B company. So this S and this S gets cancelled off. This is a payment. This is a receipt. Here he's paying to, he's also paying 10%. Understanding? So 10 plus 2 is 12 percent, isn't it? At the end it is 12 percent. Or in short, if you want to do the working, 
एस प्लस टू परसेंट प्लस एस ओके प्लस यू डोंट नो सॉरी ट्वेल्व परसेंट माइनस ऑल दिस यू विल गेट द आंसर सो ट्वेल्व माइनस एस प्लस टू प्लस एस 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 गेट्स कैंसल्ड ट्वेल्व माइनस टू सो टेन परसेंट दैट्स हाउ यू गेट द टेन परसेंट आई ऑलवेज टेल फिक्स इज द बैलेंस इन फिगर फिक्स रेट लेटर Let's do for A and check. Are you getting the S at the end or not? Okay. So for this, with swap, it is ten percent. Okay. He's paying. So for this one, it's easy because it's only ten percent. So he has to pay S. So S has to be there as a payment because there there was nothing for A. But for B, it's a balancing figure. You understanding? So just do like this and see. Now, he's paying ten percent. He's also paying S. He's receiving that ten percent from B. So ten ten gets cancelled. Only S is remaining. And if you see A, interest rate after swap is S only. It's a little confusing. It looks confusing, but keep doing this question because questions are similar. Only the numbers are changed, figures are changed. That's it. This is how you set up. First, you start without swap, then the gain, deduct. The difference is what you have to get at the end under the swap. So you start with swap, and who is paying to whom? A is paying to B. What rate? B is paying to A. What rate? How do you decide it? Just check in which company variable rate is there. That company is paying that variable rate, and fix is just a balancing figure. Okay, so these were the steps. Now let us do another question. So, if you have understood the previous question, this question also you will understand with little changes here. Okay, here also splits are equally divided. Company X and Company Y. Company X's fixed rate is six percent. Variable is S plus eighty, and here the fixed rate is five percent, and variable rate is this. So, let us do quickly the same thing that we have done in the previous question. Okay. Find the difference among the two. X Y difference. Fixed floating. Fixed rate is six percent, and here it is five percent. Here it is uh, S plus eighty. Here it is S plus fifty. In this, if you see. Y is having both lower fixed and lower variable, but let's check the difference. Six minus five, and this thirty basis point. That means zero point three percent. Thirty basis point means zero point three percent. In which one is Y having the lower fixed or variable? Fix because one person. So Y is going for fix. X is going for floating rate. This two. Under swap, and if you have to find the gain, it is one minus zero point three, which is zero point seven, and this zero point seven is divided equally, so zero point three five zero point three five is the gain. Okay, remember in in uh, in your exam you will have the bank fees also, which you have to deduct. They will tell you what is the bank fees. So now, let us. Set the position. How we have done for the previous question, without swap. X, Y. Without swap, they will go for the opposite. Okay. X will go for fixed rate, which is six percent, and he will go for the variable S plus fifty, zero point five percent. Then the gain, zero point three five, zero point three five, which you have to deduct to find interest rate after swap. So six minus zero point three five percent. Now in the textbook you will get a little confused the way it is presented. So it's better you follow this lecture. 
so the difference is 5.65% at the end you have to pay this rate only and here it will be S plus 0.15% okay if you see x prefers to pay at fixed rate y prefers to pay at floating rate so that's what they are doing at the end x is paying fixed rate only y is, pay, uh, y is paying variable rate only now which swap what are they doing variable s plus 0.8 percent And 5% now X to Y Y to X I told you start with the variable rate who is having the variable rate this guy Y is having the variable rate so Y is going to pay S to X and S X is going to receive that S you see sorry here That's why it's without bracket for X and with bracket for Y. And now variable fix is the balancing. From whose side X is going to pay the fix? So from this side you have to start. How do you do that? It's simple. 5.65 minus with swap it is S plus 0.8 percent plus S because they are going to receive that S. So S and S gets cancelled off. 5.6 minus 0.8. Five point six minus zero point eight is how much? Four point eight five percent. So he is going to pay four point eight five percent. He is going to receive that four point eight five percent. You understanding? Try to balance it at the end and check after doing all this calculation. Are you getting this and this two figure? If you are getting it, you are absolutely right. Now, calculations involving swap codes from intermediaries. Okay, in practice, a bank is the one who normally arranges this swap. Okay, and he will code the following. Number one, ask rate. Ask rate is the rate which bank is willing to receive in which, okay, bank is will, willing to receive a fixed interest cash flow in exchange for paying a certain reference rate, such as SOFR okay bank is going to receive fixed interest and he's going to pay a, in exchange for that fixed interest is going to pay a certain reference rate next bid rate they are willing to pay in exchange for receiving that sofr that is a bid rate and the difference between this two bid and the ask gives the bank their profit margin which is usually at least two basis point they will give you in the exam they will give you, you don't have to worry about it so now let's do a question on this Company A has a 12 month loan and fixed interest is this much, variable interest is this much. Bank has quoted this as bid and ask price. So you have to show the financial position if he enters the swap. Okay, so let's do that. First, for company A, remember there is no counterparty here, the counterparty is the bank. Company A actual borrowing actual borrowing will be what he currently has a 12 month loan at a fixed rate okay but he would like to swap it with variable so the actual borrowing is the fixed rate five percent payment to the bank How much? He has to pay S. Okay, because he wants to swap a variable. So he's going to pay S to the bank. And receipt from the bank. How much? Receipt is the bid price. This much. 
is going to get it from the bank remember for s you are going to get for for variable they are going to get a fixed return from the bank which is 4.9 okay so once you add up everything net interest rate after swap so s sorry this is 5 this is s so he's paying he's going to receive 4.9 and he's going to pay 5 so that means the balance is 0 0.1 he's going to pay s plus 0 0.1 percent because for 5 minus 4.9 okay let's check without swap no swap just check whether are we getting this or not no swap without swap we are going to pay the variable s plus 0.12 percent and what is the gain the gain that will be deducted 4.95 what is that what is the gain Just check this is 0 0.112 this is 0 0.12 so 0 0.12 minus 0 0.1 is 0 0.02 right 0 0.02 that means two basis points so two basis point or 0 0.02 is the gain because see without swap it is 0 0.12 with swap it is 0 0.01 so the gain is 0 0.02 two basis point is the saving if you check you will get this only that's what you have to get now we'll do another question test your understanding nine Company B has a 12 month loan at a variable rate. Okay, fixed rate is this one. Bank is giving bid and the ask price. So everything remains the same, and then you have to go for the swap. What is the actual borrowing? That means with swap. enter uh, uh, the company has at a variable rate and would like to swap to a fixed rate okay so actually he was borrowing at variable rate which is s plus 0.15 percent okay then there is a payment to the bank when you are making the payment to the bank it is the ask price ask price is 4.95 percent this is in bracket because these are all payments then receipt from the bank is s variable rate because they're exchanging variable for payment to bank now the net interest after swap just add all once you add all s gets cancelled off because you're here paying here and receiving from bank and 0 0.15 plus 4.95 the total payment is 5.10 percent okay to get this let's see without swap you are paying the fix fix rate which is 5.12 percent now gain what is the gain if you check without swap and with swap the difference it is 0 0.02 only understanding Now I will show you this through a diagram.
how this thing will is working all this while i was showing you through this now i will show you through a diagram diagram is not needed in the exam just to make it very clear for you to show you a visual representation of how this will look like okay so this is the bank okay and here the company a here is the company b i'm very bad in drawing but anyway the lender lender okay so bank will pay <coughs> come okay who is paying wait a minute this is regarding company b earlier we were in the company a okay and this has been taken from previous illustration that's why we have company a also so what's happening is that here company a is paying bank s okay and bank is paying company b s the S that bank has received from company A, he is paying to company B now. Because company uh, bank is receiving S from company A, bank is paying to company A 4.9%. And company B is paying to A 4.95%. Obviously, bank will receive more and he will pay less. That's how bank is going to make their profit, right? What is the bid? 4.9 and 4.95. That's the same. Now, company B is paying how much? S plus 0.15. We have just checked here. The actual borrowing. Right? And company A is paying 5%. How 5%? Because in the earlier question you have to check. Right? We have taken it from the earlier this one. They were paying 5%. So this is the visual representation, but you don't have to do this. Further swap example. Okay. Here company A. Okay. This is the variable rate and this is the fixed rate company B. This is the fixed rate and this is the variable rate. Okay. Bank is giving you the bid and the ask price show how the intermediary would work okay now this is the visual representation which i will go later i will explain later okay first let me do the swap so when you're doing this swap what is the actual borrowing payment to bank receipt from bank a and b and finally what you get at the end is known as net interest after swap okay you have to get the net interest after swap exactly like this also no swap and the gain okay but first you have to decide whether you are going to go for fixed or variable write the two fixed rate of a and b 
for a it is 5.4 and 4.85 and the difference zero point five five percent and the floating rate as s plus 50 s plus 65 the difference is 0 0.15 okay if you see this is a little different question why in this case b is having a lower fixed cost a is having a lower floating rate okay but you go by the difference okay so here it will be negative see when you're finding the difference find from one direction only do not do like this for example if you are doing 5.4 minus 4.85 here also you have to do like this 5 s plus 0 0.5 minus s plus 0 0.65 so it will be negative you understanding that means is not having any advantage a is not having any advantage sorry b is not having any advantage but the higher difference is in the fixed rate for B. Okay. So B have to go for fix. And A will go for variable rate. I have already circled it also. Okay. And that is the actual borrowing here. S plus 0.5%. 4.85%. Okay, without swap, they will go for, he will go for fix, 5.4%. He will go for variable, S plus 0.65%. And the gain, you have to find the gain first. How do you get the gain? Add this to, because now the difference, of the difference, I mean, this is negative, so it will be added. Because if you do minus minus, it becomes a plus, which is 0 0.7. This you divide by 2, 0 0.35 and 0 0.35, the gain. Because they told that the gain is divided equally. After that, what? Sorry, I think the gain is not shared equal in this case because here the gain will go like that. But remember the bank, the difference between the bit and the hours, the profit margin, it is 0 0.02. And this will go to whom? The 0 0.02. A or B? the one who is going to pay the variable rate because he's going to pay the variable rate to the bank and bank is going to give this rate to him okay wait there is one one little issue which is happening right now Sixty-eight. So okay, the gain is seventy. Will not divided equally. It is seventy. Okay, from zero point seven. Eighteen zero point two. No, the, the 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 savings are not spread equal here. Okay. So 
so from here 0 0.7 two basis point have gone to the bank so if two basis point goes it leaves two basis point goes it leaves 0 0.68 okay and this 0 0.68 is shared between the two companies Okay, so we have not got the gain yet. Anyway, we'll leave it for time being. Okay, this gain. And then we'll concentrate on this payment to the bank and receipt from the bank. Remember, you are paying S to the bank, B company. And receiving S from the bank because A wants fixed rate at the end okay so A wants fixed rate means he'll be paying fixed rate to the bank that means at the end he'll be having fixed rate and he's actually and he's already having a borrowing here so he has to receive s so that this s and this s gets cancelled off and he only have a fixed rate here okay and he's going to and this b is going to pay fixed rate is the balancing figure but for that you have to get the net interest after swap you have to get the gain Anyway, uh, yes, so to the payment to the bank, this is the fixed price. Okay. Ask and the bid. Who is going to pay? Receipt and the payment will be different this time. It's not the same. Receipt will be at 4.5 payment will be at ask price which is 4.52 so in this case who is paying a is paying percent whoever is paying is paying at the higher price remember that and this this is a and whoever is receiving this is 4.5 percent okay so from here you can get it 5.02 percent will be this because SS gets cancelled 0 0.5 plus 4.52 and here SS will be there plus 4.85 minus 4.5 which is 0 0.35 so in this case to get the gain we are going indirectly okay 5.4 minus 5.02 that's how you are getting 38 basis point understood and because the total has to be 68 out of 68 38 went for uh, a the balance 30 basis point is for b if you want to sh sh uh, make sure that this is correct just check this this gets cancelled and 65 minus 35 so 30 basis point the difference between swap and without swap so in both ways the gain is 30 basis point this is a little complicated i can understand the reason is because the two companies the gain directly you cannot find out payment is different payment and received from the bank that's why
this, so this is what this is what is happening okay but diagram thing i don't think you need it so i'm not including it using the yield curve and the fra rates to set the swap rate okay this usually happens when it's for multiple years okay so in this example remember even this also you are going to get in the exam okay it has been asked in the exam and it might be asked in your exam so in this example the bank agreed to pay a fixed stream of payment to a company in exchange for variable stream of payment okay or vice versa the bank decides what the fixed payment should be how by analyzing the company's yield curve there are some key consideration especially when the uh, the swap is in the starting period what is it present value of the variable payment is equal to the present value of the fixed rate payment when both are discounted at the spot yield and why do we use forward rate fra rate for the swap rate how are they both related because forward rate are the best estimate of the actual interest rate that might be uh, payable in the future now we are going to do a question on this this is a little bit uh, challenging so that's why you need to i'll be going a little slow in this question okay so here the debt is 10 million base interest at variable rate based on the current yield curve okay every year the yield curve is different okay you have been given for the three years now there's a likelihood that interest rate will rise over the next few years so they want to arrange a three-year swap okay where they will pay a fixed annual rate to the bank in exchange for a variable rate based on the given yield less 30 given yield less 30 basis point okay assuming that they will receive a variable less 30 basis point from the bank calculate the fixed rate of interest that they will have to pay to the bank in the swap okay this question has been asked in the exam so how do you do that see for the first year you don't have to do any working it's easy second and third year you have because first year will be given to you the FRA rate second and third year you have to predict so let's do that when you go to the first year because they told minus 30 basis point so this will be 3.96 minus 30 which will be 3.66 percent okay that means 3.66 percent on 10 million right but the next two years you have to find out okay how are you going to do that based on the fra we have already calculated fra if you remember in test your understanding one so you have to go back to my video in case if you forgot or if you have the test your understanding one with you we have already solved we have got the fra rate what was it for year two fra rate was How much 4.54% and for the third year it was 5.18% okay so here it will be 4. Point f okay so here only second year okay year 2 year 3 so here minus 30 minus 30 which will be 4.24% 4.88% right but this are the rates you have to calculate fixed payment okay that means we learn something that fixed payment okay that this the present value of the fixed payment is equal to present value of the variable payment isn't it this is a long line of calculation that i have to do now
so what is it we don't know the return amount we don't know so x divide by discount it we have to discount what is it first here it is 1.3096 so 1.0396 plus this is in bracket x divide by when you have to discount the second year it will be this 1.0425 to the power 2 plus x divided by 1.0456 to the power 3 before deducting the 30 basis point you have to take okay which will be equal to how much how much see here you have already got this percentages right this you have to multiply it by what 10 million because 10 million is the debt so once you get 10 million it will be equal to what 3.66 percent of 10 million is what 366k that means 336,000 424k 488k you have to discount this now which will be equal to 366k this you have to discount same 0 0.396 plus 424k divided by 1.0425 squared plus 488k divided by 1.0456 to the power 3 so now what do you do tell me calculate can you do that will you be able to do it so this side on the right hand side you can do the calculation okay but what about the left hand side x so this will be basically one this will be one this will be one in terms of that means 1x divided so 1 divided by 1.0396 how much it will be 0.962x same for the next one 0.920x plus 0.875x equal to you can do that right 366 divided by 1.3096 it will be 3.352k uh, plus 390k plus 427k now if you add it this side it will be 2.757k equal to 1169k make k the subject of the equation sorry x this is x which will be 1169k that means 1000 divide by 2.757 x will be equal to 424k k on the 10th million how much it will be divide this by 10 million it will be equal to 4.24 percent this is the rate which we have been talking about the fixed rate 4.24 percent this is how you have to calculate okay so this is the rate that you will be paying to the bank you'll be receiving variable rate from the bank that is the yield minus 30 because you are receiving that variable rate you are paying to the bank this fixed rate 4.24 percent okay 
they will tell you to find the fixed rate only they will not tell you to find the variable rate because how can you find the variable rate it is very difficult they will always give you the variable rate you have to find the fixed rate okay so this is the way you have to do the question a little bit of uh, algebra is needed here the maths you need how to make x the subject of the equation and find that you need other than that this is very easy question okay now let us turn to the last hedging technique for interest rate swap that is swap shen okay this is the combination of option and swap hence option and swap okay so it has the benefit of both the swap and the option okay now when you purchase an interest rate swap shen remember you have a right because now it's an option on swap not an obligation to enter into a swap okay but you have to pay the premium now because it's an option so now let us do a question on swap shen before we conclude the lecture so usually in this we don't get questions like calculation has not been asked but something to write might be asked right but a question has not been asked on swap shen but anyway let's go through this illustration to understand how it works Shown has a 10 million loan repayable in five years. Okay, at this variable rate, and the SOFR is currently 5.75 percent. The company is exposed to the risk of fluctuating interest rate. The treasurer believes that they will stay low for the next two years. Okay, this one. After, however. The outlook is at best uncertain. She would like to hedge this risk, but is not sure if the current swap rate is the best available. The treasurer wants to lock in the swap rate in the two years time for the following three years and have the flexibility to benefit from a lower swap rate should the swap rate fall. Remember, the benefit of lower interest rate you can only take when you have option with you. Otherwise, no. Okay. So this is achieved by buying a two-year option out of the five. The first two years you can go for an option, and the remaining three year without an option. Okay. So now, this is the this is what is happening. If you see it in the time scale, from now and two years, you buy a option, you pay floating rate on the loan. Okay. After two years, you decide whether you are going to exercise it or not. Okay, if the three-year swap rate is greater than seven percent, then only you exercise this option because you have to pay the fixed rate seven percent. If you do, if it goes below seven percent, you do not exercise, and hence benefit from the interest rate which is lower than seven percent. Okay, so this is how swap option work. Now let's summarize everything. So. at the end everything that we have covered in this lecture is summarized in this one box okay starting with fra we have started with forward rate agreement we told if it's a borrowing you buy if it's a deposit you sell okay irg this we have not covered in the lecture but uh, through this i'm going to explain you irg stands for interest rate guarantee or you can say option on fra like how we have options on future we have option on fra also but it usually does not come okay it have not come but anyway if it comes irg is call option and uh, for borrowing and for depositing is put option okay you can memorize this table but once you understand the concept properly you don't even have to memorize it you automatically will know it for borrowing what it is for depositing what it is but anyway for the summary for the revision this is a good tool that you can use future if it's a borrowing you sell future if it's a deposit you buy future an option borrowing put option deposit call option okay we also went through callers floor and cap cap is a put option floor is a call option and caller is the combination of the two you for borrowing you buy put option sell call option for deposit you buy call option sell put option in a caller that's what you do right then we went through swaps interest rate swap and swap option where you can swap fixed for floating floating for fixed 
based on the comparative uh, the comparative advantage whoever is having the higher comparative advantage is going to select that rate for the swap please do questions on this and these are the things we have covered fra fixes one rate it could be over the counter also otc then the future future also fixes a rate option okay in option we have swap options we have interest we have option on future we have option on fra okay then swap over the counter swap is over the counter mostly okay the two parties are known as counterparty bank also can come and arrange it swap fix for variable flows and split in the gains you have to know how the gains are split if the question is silent equal otherwise they will tell you the ratio okay so that's it for this lecture thank you for watching and please 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 now is your job i have finished my part risk management is over i have finished all the three lectures under risk management uh lecture 8 9 and 10 so from lecture 11 we are going to start accusation and merger the remaining four lectures will be on accusation and merger lecture 11 12 13 and 14 so see you in the next section of the syllabus and now it's your job to take out your revision take out your revision kit and do the questions thank you for watching and do not forget to subscribe my channel 